Good morning, people. Thanks for joining me. We're in the book of Mark, still there, chapter 11, and uh, we're following up from the incident of Jesus and uh, the cursing of that fig tree. Disciples were amazed that this curse had come about, and Jesus says to them, don't be shocked. Don't be shocked at all, because if you have faith, you can move mountains. But then at the end of that verse, he comes with some very sobering thoughts. He says, wonderful, hey, I could go and kick mountains into the sea. And Jesus said, yeah, that might be cool, but here's the big deal. And he puts this at the end of that particular little passage. And he says this, And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Forgiveness. Forgive those who have wronged you. And ask forgiveness of those that you have wronged. You know, I just think as, as I get older and I think of the number of deathbed times that I've managed to be privileged to be sitting at the deathbed of people going from this life to the next. And there's one thing that people who know they're going to die soon all have in common is the need to be forgiven and the need to forgive. I've seen this acted out so radically in my own eyes with people who have been called to the deathbed and, and they're saying, Trevor, please, before I die, will you ask my son to forgive me? And uh, it's just tragic that we have to wait to the end of our days in order to see the need for that. I want to give you just a, a little hint, maybe, maybe a little word of advice about forgiveness. As huge as a subject it is, and I don't want to make it any smaller and make light of it today. But for you to be able to learn how to forgive, we need to do as Jesus did and walk in an attitude of forgiveness. Walk having already decided that no matter what happens, you choose to forgive. So when something does happen to you and suddenly you're required to forgive, you're not going to go back and say, hey, I'm going to think about this thing. This guy's really offended me and really hurt me. I need to go and ponder my navel for a while and I need to just go and sulk in the corner before I decide whether to forgive him or her or not. Walk in forgiveness means to say, I made a choice that no matter what people do to me, I will choose to forgive. I certainly had a, a beautiful example of this this last month or two where there was a family who had uh, been destroyed by a, a divorce that had taken place and um, they actually went to the wedding of the one who had divorced the other and uh, in support of him now that that's a strange thing they turned their anger into forgiveness so i found them and i said how did you do that this young man has hurt you so bad, he's run off, he's left your daughter, and he's run away. How could you agree to go to his wedding of the next girl that he was about to marry? And they just smiled and said, because we made a choice. You see, we either have to forgive him now, or we have to forgive him then. And we've chosen to forgive him now. And I thought, isn't that a beautiful picture of what it means to walk in forgiveness? Don't wait for it to happen and think, what am I going to do now? Forgive before the event even takes place. Isn't that what Jesus did? When Jesus hung upon a cross, he didn't wait for the people to repent before he'd, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what to do. When Jesus hung upon the cross and said, Father, forgive them, he, no, nobody had repented yet. Nobody had come and said they were sorry. Nobody had come to acknowledge their own sinfulness. But Jesus' forgiveness was not based upon an apology. It was simply he walked in forgiveness. He took forgiveness and he gave forgiveness to those who needed it. Now, people, listen carefully. We're coming up to the forgiveness weekend, coming up to Easter soon. And you need to make a list of the people who you know that you have hurt. This is a tough thing to do. Or even might have hurt or have heard that you might have hurt them. And people that have hurt you that need your forgiveness as much as you need to give them forgiveness. And I would suggest that maybe you make a list and say, well, let me, let me take my courage pills and let me get out there and go and meet these people. I had to do one recently of uh, somebody who I'd just spoken impatiently to and, and he was shocked that I would speak that way. And for years I sat on this thing knowing what I had to do. And then one day I thought to myself, I'll phone him. 
So I phoned him out of my conscience and I was so surprised at his response. He just cried on the phone. He said, Trevor, you have no idea how long it has been since I've been waiting for this call. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we now have restored and uh, it, it's a remarkable feeling. I sleep better at night and he's a lot happier. I'm a lot happier. For goodness sake, it's a good thing to do. The best thing you can do for your mental health is actually to forgive. The best thing you can do for your physical health may also be that you need to forgive. So make a commitment really soon. Put a date to it if you have to, to say these are the people I'm going to address. I will ask their forgiveness or I will be forgiving them for that which they have done to me. If you do that, you are imitating Christ. And isn't that what the Christian experience is all about? Think about that, people, and you're going to have a good day. Bye.